We start with Ukraine and how the war is shifting. Russia is on the verge of scoring a major win. Ukraine is striking deep into Russian territory. Russia has introduced a new weapon, the boomerang drone. Ukraine wants America to give it cluster bombs. In the next few minutes, we'll break down the shift. We'll look at the new state-of-the-art weapons that are changing the game, starting with a battle for Bakhmut. The Russian forces are closing in. They're making gains every day, and Ukraine is under pressure to retreat. If Bakhmut falls, it will be a big prize for Russia, its first major win in more than six months. How is it happening? Russia has changed its strategy. Instead of sweeping offensives, it is now taking a more targeted approach. The mass firepower has been replaced by drones, drones of all shapes and sizes. They're all being deployed and they're being used for everything, for launching attacks, for reconnaissance, even as a tool for distraction. In Bakhmut, Russia launched a wave of drone attacks. Ukraine is on the defensive. It wants more powerful drones to hit back. Listen to this Ukrainian soldier on the front lines. When you see drones, you have to hide and not shoot. There is very little chance that you will be able to hit them, so the chance that they hit you is very high. That's why you have to hide. And we, our flying drones, we can see who's hitting us, but we're not hitting them with artillery while they hit our drones. And in 80% of the cases, it's losses in their unit because of our army. In four months, they've hit four drones. He's right. Russia is using more drones and they're proving to be quite an effective weapon. Ukraine too is using them, sending them deep inside Russian territory. Last week, in fact, a drone came close to Moscow. There was a flurry of drone strikes. Yesterday it happened again. A military tower was struck inside Russia. Ukraine's special forces took responsibility for this one. And how is Russia responding? With an all-new weapon being introduced to this war. It is called the boomerang drone. Take a look at this. This video was released by the Russian Defense Ministry. It shows the boomerang drone. It's small, it has four propellers, four small motors, a big battery and a special magazine filled with explosives. These drones belong to a special category. They're called the kamikaze drones. They're basically suicide weapons. We've told you about this before. These drones are packed with explosives. They fly into enemy territory and then they explode. Usually two soldiers operate one drone. One of them controls it, the other navigates it. The Russian military video shows the operator wearing what look like VR glasses. VR, as you would know, is virtual reality. The operator is wearing VR glasses. Russia says it has deployed this technology, virtual reality, with the drone. How does it help? It is used to detect and destroy the target. So the first soldier operates the drone with a VR headset. The second one plays the role of an assistant. He tracks the drone's flight path and guides the operator. Now, the biggest advantage of this weapon is its speed. Russia says this drone can fly at 170 kilometers per hour. The second benefit is its battery life. It can stay in the air for three hours. And since it is so small, it can escape radars. So Russia's strategy is clear. It has made a tactical shift from relying on bigger weapons to deploying more drones. And the boomerang is just one example. We mentioned the Iranian drones. Tehran supplied Moscow with this drone, the Shahid-136. This too is a suicide drone. It loiters in the air and takes out targets on the ground. The drone has a range of 2,200 kilometers. It can carry a warhead weighing anywhere between 5 to 30 kilograms. Next, we have the Orlan-10. Again, it's a small drone. It has a camera and a small bomb. This drone has computer chips too. They enable navigation. Russia has been weaponizing commercial drones as well. Those that are readily available in the market, Russian forces fit bombs on them. But these drones stay in the air for just 45 minutes. So that's a drawback. And that is Russia's drone arsenal. What about Ukraine? Ukraine too is sending drones, using drones, and it wants more of them. Yesterday, Ukraine carried out an operation deep inside Russian territory. It was done by Ukraine's special forces. The target was a military watchtower. It was inside Russia's Bryansk region. Now, it's not clear when this happened, but Ukraine has released a video, a Hollywood-style film, to claim the attack.
Seems like video editors are the new soldiers in this war and propaganda is the tool of choice. But on the ground, the drones are changing the course of the conflict and to counter Russia's new offensive, Ukraine has sent a new request to America. It wants cluster bombs. These are lethal explosives, cluster bombs. And the one that Kiev wants is called the MK-20. It's a cluster bomb delivered by an aircraft. Once the bomb is released, it opens in the air and it releases several smaller bombs. They drop on the enemy like rain. How many bombs does one explosive pack? More than 240, according to one claim. 240 bombs in one cluster bomb. Think of it as an explosive, a group of darts. When they're thrown together, they travel in different directions. So they, they hit a wider area. Ukraine believes the MK-20 can counter Russia's drone strikes. It sounds like an effective weapon, but it's also a dangerous one. Cluster bombs are banned by more than 120 countries. India is not one of them. Reports say India maintains a stockpile of these bombs. But why have these other countries banned cluster bombs? It's because they pose a risk to civilians. A cluster bomb is a controversial weapon. Will Ukraine be allowed to use it? More importantly, will the U.S. give it to Ukraine? Reports say Washington is yet to decide. In the meantime, Ukraine is relying on another American weapon. It's called the Switchblade 300. This too is an American drone. And it can take out an entire building with a single hit. Then there are the Turkish drones, like the Bayraktar TB2. It's a small plane. It's like a small plane, this drone. It has many capabilities, like reconnaissance and targeted attacks. Ukraine has used these drones to strike deep inside Russia. And it plans to use more such weapons. This is how the war is changing. As stockpiles of conventional weapons shrink, Drones will decide the fate of this war. And the trend is not limited to Ukraine. Drones are fast becoming the world's weapon of choice. They're convenient to use, they're cost effective and they save human resources. So drones are playing a significant role in conflict zones around the world and militaries are building bigger drone arsenals. Tonight, we'll discuss the latest trends We'll talk about how big the global drone market is and which are the leading players in this industry, starting with India. India is close to approving a big drone deal. Reports say India is looking to buy the MQ-9B drones from America. These are predator drones and India is keen to buy at least 30 of them. It will cost $3 billion or 24,000 crore rupees. These drones come with anti-submarine and anti-ship capabilities, also land attack capabilities. And India's decision to buy these drones will not sit well with China. The Predator drones will be deployed in the Himalayas to monitor China's aggression along the border. They'll also help India keep an eye on the Indian Ocean region, where China has been active. This deal is expected to be finalized when Prime Minister Modi visits the US this summer. It will also be a testament to the growing ties between Washington and New Delhi. So far, America has given such drones only to its treaty allies, to other NATO members. So India will be the first country outside the NATO club to get access to these drones. And this defense partnership, India and the US, it's relatively new. Till 2008, defense trade between these two countries was close to zero. Today, it stands at well over $20 billion. That's the India story. Then we have Japan, a country that is far shedding its specificism. Japan faces a dual threat from China and North Korea. In 2021, it began developing unmanned aircraft for military use. By 2035, Japan wants to deploy unmanned fighter jets. It is looking to replace its military aircraft with drones. And for Japan, there is added incentive to invest in unmanned weapons. This country faces an acute dearth of manpower. It has to prepare for a future where it may not have enough human resources. So it's investing in unmanned weapons. And do you know who dominates this market? The United States. In 2021, the global military drone market was worth more than $10 billion, and it's growing by the year. Last year, it was close to $12 billion. By 2029, it could cross the $30 billion mark. And the U.S. leads this market when it comes to unmanned surveillance drones. It's making more of them. But when it comes to the export of armed drones, China is the world leader. China is giving drones to more countries. In the past decade, China has delivered 
282 combat drones, 282 combat drones to 17 countries. What about the U.S.? Not even close. America has supplied just 12 combat drones in the last 10 years, and all of them have gone to two countries, France and the United Kingdom. What explains this? Why has the U.S. been left behind? You see, Chinese drones are cheap. So more countries buy them, and they buy more of them. Also, China allows countries a flexible payment mechanism. It's not a huge fan of rules anyway. The U.S. does not. Here's another interesting fact. There's this Chinese company, a drone company. It's called DJI. And this Chinese drone company controls 70% of the world's drone market, 7-0, 70%. DJI manufactures civilian drones, at least that's what it claims. And civilian drones, along with military ones, make up a $30 billion market worldwide. By the end of this decade, this market will grow to $55 billion. Another big player, interestingly, is Turkey. It has emerged as a major drone power. Its Bayraktar TB drones have become a sensation the world over. At least 28 countries have bought the Turkish drone, and they're all quite happy with it, we are told. And the era of drones is just getting started. You may remember the, the Nagorno-Karabakh conflict back in 2020. Azerbaijan used Turkish drones to overpower Armenia. That's because drones make war for countries easier. Militaries no longer need to put their soldiers on the line. Drones can be operated remotely and they can cause a lot of damage. Ask Ukraine. It's at the receiving end in Bakhmut. Also, drones are relatively cheap. In the near future, UAVs, unmanned aerial vehicles, could do pretty much all that a fighter jet does. Reconnaissance, surveillance, attack. And another thing I must point out, the West doesn't have a stranglehold over the drone market. There are countries like China, Turkey, and even Iran. All of them have become robust manufacturers of drones. And they're making sure more countries have access to this technology. The West won't have much of a say on who gets which weapons. And that, we say, is a major shift. So far, the biggest defense manufacturers in the world were concentrated in a handful of countries. Drones are changing that. And finally, it's time for Vantage Shots, images that tell the story. Holy, the festival of colors is upon us. It marks the arrival of spring and the end of winter. Celebrations have kicked off in various parts of India and Nepal. In Thailand, 100,000 candles were lit at a Thai temple. It was to honor the Buddha on Maka Bucha Day. In the U.S., California is receiving twice the amount of snow it usually gets. In Finland, bright and colorful northern lights lit up the sky. And finally, Barbie is celebrating the International Women's Day. The doll is no longer white, petite, and a damsel in distress waiting for Ken. She's now black, body positive, and a space scientist. Even if it's a marketing stunt, it's worth mentioning, we say. Leaving you with these visuals, thanks for watching. We'll see you tomorrow.